So after uh, after the presentation, uh, you're more after the presentation. You know, go off, have fun. Um, I will do uh, a real demo. So you know, enter a jail, build build a package by hand. The the, the presentation will be more um, me doing this a lot and and showing slides, and then at the end of the slides, a few questions, um, and then we'll do. I'll actually use a real emulated jail, build PKG or some other package that doesn't have a lot of dependencies, and uh, one that I know builds. And uh, take, your, take your question. Yeah, PKG. It'll build. It has to build. Otherwise, nothing would work. It would be bad. Um, but I just kind of want to show uh, for, for ARM, uh, this will work. For MIPS32, this will work. And for MIPS64, this will work. Um, uh, if there are people who are interested in PowerPC on FreeBSD um, or Spark 64, um, the QEMU emulator needs some needs a lot of help, and uh, um, you can come talk to me about that after the presentation. But it's there. There is there's some uh, very good things we can do with this emulation to uh, keep alive architectures that aren't uh, x86, that aren't uh, Intel. All right. I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for all coming. Uh, the last presentation slot of the day, always fun. Um, I'll be presenting today a uh, status on cross-building, in a way, uh, for architectures that are not x86. Um, specifically, I'll be talking about ARM v6, MIPS32, and MIPS64. Um, we'll be using. Uh, Kernel side code, user land code, QEMU, uh, Poudriere, PKG. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of demonstrations of how this works as we go along. Um, the kernel components, I'm going to, I want to kind of show some of the code that's involved in the kernel to actually intercept execution, interpret the ELF header, and redirect execution to an emulator. It's very, it's very cool. Um, the user land components is the tool bin mish ctl is the tool you use to configure the redirection. You input a, a certain caret elf header and an emulator, give it a name, and then that instructs the kernel what you want executed when the user tries to run a MIPS32 binary on your AMD64 system. Um, the emulator I'm using is QEMU. A lot of work has been done on the BSD user mode, specifically the free BSD user mode. The NetBSD and OpenBSD user mode tools are not, they're not in a working state that I'm aware of. Um, the final user land component that I'll be using is as of eight hours ago, Poudriere Devel is a package you can get uh, online now. Uh, using NullFS and Chirrut along with Poudriere, you can trivially create jails that allow you to Chirrut into an ARM v6 or MIPS32 environment on your machines. So you don't, if you don't want to build packages, but you want to test your own code for whatever reason, this is going to be a technique that you can do right now on FreeBSD head. Any project of this complexity took a lot of people. I have been the, the sheep herder of gathering code from other people, committing it, pushing it upstream, and getting a testable version of everything. Um, the original Implementation and idea was coded out by Stacy Son. Um, Jurgen Locke, the current FreeBSD maintainer of QEMU, has tens of patches to QEMU to get it to the point where it's stable. Uh, Ed Mast of the FreeBSD Foundation helped uh, in several icky situations with uh, QEMU to get it stabilized. Uh, Peter Wem 
uh, walked me through compiling one piece of assembly and then decoding it to figure out what the signal trampoline address was that I needed because it was hard and that was very useful. Uh, Alexander Kabiev uh, sent in numerous QEMU patches. Uh, Adrian Chad didn't help me because I needed to learn how to do this myself, um, but he guided me to the right piece of code to modify in syskern. Uh, Baptiste um, punished me for all this with a ports commit bit. Thank you. Uh, Dimitri, vital to getting Clang stabilized to where we could do this gruesome, unbelievably confusing way of building things. Andrew Turner is currently working on GCC and other ports and linking libraries. Uh, Mikhail fixed my SQL for users on ARMv6, which is going to be vital. Uh, Brian has been helping me with Powder Keg itself. Uh, Warner Losh actually made a tool chain of AMD64 binaries that outputs ARMv6 so that I could put that into the jail so that CC is not emulated and it runs much faster. Ian Lepore has been decoding assembly instructions and helping me with Clang. And Brooks Davis uh, inspired me to do this uh, this spring in, uh, at Asia BSDCon when he pointed me at all this stuff and we got the project off the ground. So uh, kernel components, the first thing, um, there is a kernel module that's built called uh, image act bin mish. Uh, it is a kernel module that hooks in to uh, the execution layer of the FreeBSD kernel and allows you to execute any emulator, any other tool you want. Through the user land tool, you can completely break your machine in a way that is new and exciting. You can make it completely and totally unusable by anyone outside of yourself. Because you can say, if somebody executes this type of binary, run it through an emulator, which can be a shell or a script or anything you like. It doesn't have to be QE in here, so it's fun. The module itself looks at your argv sub zero, looks there and then pushes everything out and then drops in your emulator at the front of it before execution. That's really the magic. It's manipulating your execution string, pushing it out, and then adding in QEMU in my case. Now, I have not made this human readable for a reason, because it's not. Uh, Binmish CTL, it has a man page, you can, you can look at it. Um, it works off the following syntax, and I just kind of want to go into it because it's important. Um, in this example, I have a MIPS32 and an ARMv6 execution. You will run this as root on your machine. You execute this, you give it, you say you're going to add a redirection, you're going to call it some name, call it ARMv6, call it Bob. We'll call it Bob and it will be good. You say, I want this redirector named armv6 to use this program, QEMU. If a program is executed that has this ELF header, that's actually the ELF header for an armv6 binary in FreeBSD, match on the following bits in that header, enable it, and you're off and running. Hopefully, you've installed QEMU by this point. So this is the mechanical bits that actually get you to the point of, OK, now that the kernel is actually, lit, now the kernel is actually configured, you can say, give me a list of the things that are installed. This, gives, this will tell you what will be done. If I add a redirection, here is actually how you can see if that redirection is active. QEMU is the emulator that I am using. If you have an emulator for an architecture that you want to use, it should just work. I don't know of a reason why it won't, and I'm more than happy to test other emulators. Uh, right now, in ports, 
Jurgen has created the static user version of QEMU that's the one that we're using to build packages. It's the one I recommend because it builds a statically linked binary that can be copied around anywhere in your file system, and we will be copying it around anywhere in your file system very soon. Um, emulation is hard to be able to do. You have to really be prepared to learn how a computer works if you don't, which I didn't, and now I definitely don't know how computers work. Uh, the main thing for FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD is having QEMU understand read-write operations on the different IOCTLs, um, what the syscall numbers are, what they mean, and how you actually execute. That's most of the changes that we've been making have been, oh, we have this type of file system property. We need an IOCTL for that. We emulate that and return some value. A lot of sys controls are not, will return AMD64 values to a 32-bit environment, so they have to be shrunk. Otherwise, bad things happen. Those are the kinds of problems that we run into. Uh, Poudrier Devel uh, is the easiest way that I know of to build a jail for doing this on your system. If you want to use Make and you want to build your own jail, good luck. Have fun. You'll figure it out. It'll be a great journey. Poudrier Devel already knows how to do all of this. So if you want to figure out how to do this by yourself, it's a great journey, but we've made Poudrier know how to do it. It knows how to configure the kernel. It knows if QEMU is installed, it will copy the right binary to the right jail. So you don't end up with a Spark 64 emulator in your MIPS32 jail. Poudrier will keep a backup of your jail so that when you break it, and you will, you have a way to go back. And please, use ZFS so you can just roll back and be done and move on. It's much easier. You need more RAM? Okay, you do. I run it on my laptop. It works. Uh, the Poudrier syntax in Poudrier Devel will be something like this. Uh, if you're familiar with the syntax of how to build packages now, it should look very familiar, except that you're going to be passing in an architecture target, target arch syntax into your command line. The dash X will build you a tool chain to help accelerate the builds because it'll be native to your host as far as binary is concerned, but then it will output the architecture that you want. So it will be a little bit of cross-building. It makes it much faster. And then, of course, check out your ports. So these are three little, sin this, these slides are available. I, I sent these off to Olivier. They should be up already. Um, these are the commands that I run to create the jails. So if you want to do this, you can do this right now on your FreeBSD 11 desktop. When you execute these commands, Poudrier will give you these these file systems, and then you're going to mount the appropriate devfs and nullfs mounts into your jails, because you have to have those when you cheroot. You can literally just cheroot in like you would any other jail, and you're off. You have a tool chain, you have all the things. Yeah, but there you go. Poudrier S. Yeah. Okay. Like start up the J dash K. And done. And then you're in. You don't have to do anything else. Do what he says. Poudrier S. So this gives you the, I mean, as you can see, I'm on the same machine in the FreeBSD cluster. I'm AMD64, and now I'm ARM. And I can start building and doing stuff. So the bulk demo is done. real briefly. For those of you who weren't here, we just finished a build, so my timing was off a little bit. Uh, we built on this run, using Poudrier and the jails and QEMU and all of these tools, we built 5,000 new packages. 
We were unable, we failed to build 364 because they're broken. And we skipped 4,000, 4,600, because probably GCC and Java. Let's see. Let's, let's take a look. What is, what is the worst offender? Java, you can't fix it because you don't have a good stuff. Indeed. So now we know, and now we know these will not build on ARM. We, have a pro we don't have a GCC tool chain. Uh, libvpx doesn't build. We can see what packages depend on that. So now you know the scope of the work. You know how much work there is to do to get what you need working. Obviously, the Linux emulators won't build. And then the failure ports also give you inf interesting information. And so we've been working through this list um, in various places. Uh, some of these are build failures. Some of these are QEMU failures, like core dump. Probably not the code itself. Probably QEMU needs to be adjusted. Um, things like linker error, that's probably the port. And so we've been guessing and fixing and changing and getting ports into the into a place where we can actually say, yes, you can run FreeBSD with packages on your ARM machine. Maybe. So that was an Nginx server on the back end. Uh, the man page for Poudrier has the configuration, or is it in share examples? Share examples. It's in share examples. So that, that, that web front end is available to you if you install Poudrier. You, if you have never installed it, it's really useful. Um, the core dumps and the question marks and the bad C++ code, those errors are probably QEMU. Probably. And that's where the sharp edges are. That's where the interesting things are that need to be fixed in the, uh, need to be fixed in. So you can actually chirrut in, type make, and it will fetch the packages and it will build them and it will do stuff. We'll do this in a moment. Um, I have failed you all, and I'm sorry. I have not written this down good. There is not a good explanation of this. Um, the binmish ctl command, I don't know how you would figure that out if you didn't go and look at the FreeBSD wiki and copy and paste from there. Um, if, you understand the, if you understand the ELF format, oh, well, of course, that's the ELF format. That's what it is. Um, so we need better documentation for this. I need to spend time and update the man pages. And I would like to add shortcuts to the command binmish ctl to where you just say binmish ctl give me an arm thing. And you don't have to enter in all the rest of it. It would just do the right thing. So for the future, um, what's going to happen Soonish, um, I have been promised Clang for MIPS over and over and over again. Um, Clang for MIPS will help a lot. Um, soon we'll be having um, ARM64 support in QEMU and FreeBSD, which means we'll be building packages for that. Um, I will be adding uh, some debug handling for IOCTL operations that are not supported in QEMU. I stole some code from John Baldwin of the FreeBSD project, and I'll be putting that into the debug version of QEMU so that you can get useful error output. And I'll show that. I'll show the unuseful error output here in a moment when we do the demo. So is there anything before, before I do a demo what would you folks like to see with this? Is there anything that is more interesting than something else? Or have I skipped something? Or do you need a coffee? Should it be cooler in here? Should we have music? And beers. Oh, God. Some, seriously, 445? And there's not a case of beer here? Anyway, and, uh, are there any questions at this point? Yes. No? no. Yes, so what, what'll, 
Yeah, so what'll work on 10 right now, everything, ev so on 10, you can do everything except dash X. Um, and if you install Poudrier Devel now, you will have one, one thing I have not MFC'd from current. So I added some features to the image activator code that's not, that's generic, that I have not MFC'd to 10. I had no intention of MFC'ing it. You can build some packages, um, but you will see interesting failures when, when you try to emulate a shell script. Because you need to emulate bin sh, but you've already put qemu in front of your shell script, but then you don't do that because it is a shell script and it fails. I think you will see that. I'll, I'll show you the code in a little bit. So you get nothing in that case. It fails, it just dies, yeah. yeah. So you will get nothing because the first boss needs to run configure, meaning a shell, meaning you have nothing. Well, it works. It, work, it, it, works, it works in a special case that, that it... Yes. Yes, you can. Um, the failure case will be if you try to use my fancy uh, AMD64 toolchain, because then it's... How does it work? Yeah, hold on, hold on. I have to, I have to get it correct. So, because there's a lot of layers here. So... The AMD64 toolchain will call make from the AMD64 toolchain, which will end up calling into 32-bit ARM v6 shell scripts. Sometimes it will do it in such a way that only the shell script image activator will fire and not the bin mish activator will fire, and it will fail. And you will be like, why did this fail? And so that is some code that I've made a change in current. And we'll look at it. I have a diff and commits and all kinds of things. But we, we'll go into it. And you can do it. You can do some of this on 10.1. So if you have 10.1 installed or 10.0 installed right now, I think you can get away with some of this. No, you type make. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, question. Any more questions, Alan? Uh, now. Well, no, we. I, official uh, Baptiste. Eleven. Okay. They're right. They're right here. You can just go right here. They're right there. So, official. Don't call him. Right. Don't call Baptiste. Don't call Port Manager. You can yell at me. And we'll do some Bugzilla stuff and whatnot. Um, what's that? <laughs> I get a tutorial because it's look. My documentation sucks. I'm sorry. I, I feel I actually do feel bad. This is the best. This slides is the best documentation that exists. You're welcome. Questions? Uh, so far. Okay. Please. What do I need to get started from this? Do I need to do anything more than shell or thing? Uh, Poudrier did everything for me. Poudrier Devel, yes, it will. And we will do that. I will show you it doing it here in a moment. But yes, Poudrier Devel, as of this morning, does all of the things that are needed to get started. And then. Yes, if you install Poudrier Devel, it will a when you go to build Poudrier Devel to install it, it'll actually ask you if you want QEMU. The, it, it'll ask you if you want if you want to install the QEMU port. It's a it's an optional dependency, and that's what it's there for. Do you have to compile a custom kernel or the image activator module? When you execute bin mish ctl, it will load the image activator for you. So just executing bin mish ctl activates loads the, the appropriate module for you. I'll do it on my laptop. That'd be great. 
because I can't con I can't connect back to the U.S. right now. It's very slow. Question? Really? Okay. So we're going to leave this machine. Maybe. Okay. We've left. All right. So I already have. I already have a jail built because I cheated because I think most of you know what a build world looks like. I can do it if you want me to, but I think we all want to leave and get beer. Um, I've also cheated and I put those into my rc.local because I don't want to ever have to remember how to type this. If somebody would like a copy of this to turn it into documentation, please come see me. So this allows me to emulate MIPS64, ARM v6, MIPS32, um, and work on the development of PowerPC32, PowerPC64, and Spark64. So those are all, so the fact that I execute these commands at host startup means that I already have the correct module loaded. So I don't even have to think about that anymore. Uh, the interesting code I want to show you before I start building. So Stacy wrote Stacy wrote this code. Um, the interesting bits, just as kind of a what's going on here. Um, when you add an entry, there's a whole bunch of data structures being set up. Um, when you search and find, this is the way that it's going about doing it. Um, when is this the execution part? Add entry. A little bit farther down. Hold on. Okay, so the kernel executes these functions here. So the kernel is going to execute the registered handler, which is so on an on module load. It's going to load the initialization routine, and then when it exits, this is this is the actual mechanism that the kernel uses to register arbitrary functions and execution uh, through sysinit and sysuninit. Um, the actual image, the image activator, this is a common data structure in FreeBSD. You can have, you can redefine your own image activator to do whatever you want. Um, it's done through this mechanism. The macro exec set tells kern exec, do this when this type of file is executed. And in our case, we're going to execute uh, image act bin mish and do all kinds of interesting stuff. Um, this looks like the main, yeah, OK. So in here, we look for the actual, does this binary match something we know about? If it does, we're, gonna, we're going to mess with argv sub 0. And that happens down here. Um, the shell script stuff I was talking about is up in here. There's actually code that looks at the first character of the file. If it's, a, if, it's, if it's going to execute a shell script, we have to behave differently than if you're executing a binary. We save off the argv sub 0, or we exit and we don't know what this is. Is that legend? Can you read? Not even a little. What do you think, 14? 
Eh? Ah, all right. I like to show code, because code is easier to understand. Um, this code, all it does is take the execution string that the kernel is about to fire off, make it longer, move the code, that, move the actual execution string down, and put in your emulator into the execution string. That's its entire job. And this is the code that does it. Uh, let's, let's do this. Uh, let's see if I can do this without typing my root password for everyone to see. Super secret. Okay. So, right now, I have that. So I will not do it the Baptiste way <laughs> and do it. So we do this. So now all I've done is I've mounted a dev tree, I've mounted the ports tree in, and I'm just going to true root in. So I'm here on my laptop. I'm now in an ARM box. We really need to change things. because I'm lazy. Let's see if we can get some let's see if we can get some messy IOCTL information in Oh, I'm still building 137. Good god. You're outdated. What's that? You are outdated. Outdated. I'm old. That's Very bad. Nice. Now, what is this thing doing behind the scenes? Yes. Would have been that was good. That combination to read a column as well. Oh, I'm sure. I don't remember that. No, you guys don't care. You guys don't care. It's fine. Notice the QEMU is not running. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's gone. Because I'm using an AMD 64 toolchain, and the QEMU is firing off to run shell scripts configure anything else what else would pkg be doing all the shell script what to configure yeah so things are happening and then maybe gzip oh gzip yeah not sure let's see mm So I so we've been we've been kind of considering some way of putting Perl and Python um, in here to do the right thing. Maybe so would be a good idea. Well, let's see. Right now, so these are some variables I learned about. Did you know you can do that? Yes. Of course you did. You're the one who told me. I think. I think, did you? Was it Warner? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Poudriere with the dash X does this to the make.conf in the jail. And this is saying that when somebody needs a compiler, use this one. It's overriding user bin CC. Because if we look at versus. For the back audience. So in this, this is what I was talking about. User bin CC is still there. It's ready to be used. It's clang. But it's going to be fully emulated. It's going to be very slow. 
what we have now in the base system is a new target called uh, if you make a native X build with the correct target, target arch, you'll actually get a compiler tool chain that you can move into the jail. And it'll, it'll do the right thing. And we can use this to speed up builds a lot, um, along with flex and uh, sed. Uh, all of, these, all of these are common tool chain components that are going to be run over and over and over again. So we went from three weeks down to one week for a full build. And that was primarily because of this. Questions? What would you like to see? You have me here. Or you can leave. It's OK. No, LibreOffice. <laughs> Get out of here, <laughs> madman. Someday, someday. So, um, the, the yes. I was going to ask about uh, IOCTL emulation. So, uh, was it com completely duplicate of what we already have in kernel for IOC 86 or M64? No. So somehow it was using. Or no. Um, well. Some, some of it was. Uh, a lot of emulation for us is uh, shrinking values. Trunk, we have to truncate values, uh, reverse values. Um, so it's very similar to I3D, because it's, it's ARM32. It's very similar. But um, in some cases, uh, there is special code in QEMU to handle changing hw.fizmem from, so it, it doesn't get reported to in here as 128 gig. It gets reported as max mem. So we cheat. So some of those are true, but eh, some, some are just copy, paste. Yeah, but no, it, it doesn't use the kernel conversion at all. No. It, it, it's standalone. So it will break when we change things in the kernel. It'll be great. Uh, what is a standalone port that I would not build very often? The small one. Package hold. The vendor package hold. You think? I'm trying to think if I actually, oh god, I've actually built this for some reason. Oh, so if I rm user ports dist files. Yeah, I do. No, I want to delete the dist file. I absolutely do. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to show what I mean. Thank you. See, I'm just a new ports committer. He's my mentor, so he has to tell me. See why? Why? The first will clean the dist file. Well, I already, so I already removed the dist file. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if this. Let's see if this does what I want it to do. Where's my internet, man? Probably should copy everything. Well, cool. Nah, it's fine. It's fine. What's that? What are you saying? You need to resolve it. In here? Yeah. I already put it in there, don't I? I'm trying to remember how old this is. All right, fine. 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 Jail dash s dot dot by default. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be difficult <laughs> for the sake of being difficult. Oh, there's not two ends in it? You know, I'd be done already if I just used jail dash ass. Uh, uh, let's see. I, 
I don't know. Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. These are the sharp edges. So good. We don't actually, I don't actually have to fail anymore. So um, my next goal is to turn this error into something that is useful. And you can go see what needs to be implemented. And I can generate, I can generate an error. So I mean, these, these don't mean anything, right? Yes. So this, these are all, this is a, all I did was in the jail do if config. And all of this stuff comes out. So these are, these are the errors. These are a lot of the errors that are causing build problems. Um, this is, a, this is a, an ongoing maintenance task. So when you add new syscalls and new ioctals, remember you're causing me more work. Anyway, any questions? Anything you guys would like to see? Do you want to leave? Because we can go. No? Thank you, everyone. That's good. Thank you.